Hello and welcome to another episode of Metal Effort. I'm your host, Nehemiah, and today I've got an interesting knife to talk about. It's the Serge Panchenko G&G Hawk Orbit. It's a collaboration between Serge Panchenko and G&G Hawk. It was m- produced by Millet Knives. Really interesting knife. Uh, we'll jump right into it with some size comparisons. I've got a PM2. I've got a Hera 3. As you can see, at first glance, the profile of the knife makes it look a lot bigger than it actually is. It's a 3-inch blade, about a 2.8-inch cutting edge. Pretty small, pretty small. Considering the size, the weight is of extra note here. So. Throw that on the old Scala Ruski. We're looking at 4.25. That's actually kind of heavy. It's not objectively heavy. There's definitely heavier knives out there, but for the size of the blade, this isn't winning any efficiency awards in terms of weight to blade ratio. Definitely over the ounce and inch, which is like the golden mark for a good blade length to weight ratio. Still, it's fine in the pocket. It's okay. I I don't think it's it's so bulky that it would make it unusable. I mean, you're already starting with a medium sized knife, so it's not it's not too bad. Let's jump into the dent, the decent, the excellent, the nitpicks, and the terrible. First, starting off with the dent is the blade shape. I really like this blade shape. This is a little bit more opinion than anything else, but I just I'm a fan of sheep sheep foot designs here it's usually pretty good for any kind of like food prep you know cutting cheese that kind of thing you can cut into things like bags and and stuff of that nature you might have a hard time with like clamshell although i think you can make it work uh with that tip just kind of going in this way not not as you know pointy or as penetrating as like a drop point or something like that but usually you can get the job done um and i like it It, it's kind of a unique shape for this kind of knife that cleaver sheep foot i'll 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 take it i'll take it next is the steel that's being used here this is the cts 204p steel which is just like the m390 and the crucibles um, CPM 20 CV, which is excellent. These these steels are the cream of the crop, and I have no qualms with it at all. It's good on corrosion resistance, sharpenability, and edge retention. It's like the trinity of, of what you you need out of a blade. Probably not the kind of toughness you want in a fixed blade, but still really good for this kind of thing. The next thing of note, and this is kind of a little bit more unique on these particular knives, but these have the titanium slabs uh, for the scales, so there's no internal like milling or anything like that. Uh, probably is part of what's contributing to the over, overall weight. You know, if this was like carbon fiber or something a little bit lighter than titanium, I'm sure it wouldn't be such a a dense little boy. But it's got a good feel to it, and you know, if you like that look, it, it's definitely distinct. Uh, so I'll, I'll, you know, it's premium parts. I'll put it in the decent. The clip ramp is a good shape. It lets your pants get uh, in there. There's just enough spring. It's not a problem uh, to do that kind of thing. I can approve in that particular regard. The other thing is that this knife is super duper chamfer. There's chamfers all over the place. Chamfering on both parts of the knife here. You've got the body of the knife as well as the titanium slabs on top both are chamfered i mean crowned all over chamfered all over uh you know aside from the cutting edge there's not a single part of this that's like sharp at all uh done a good job i don't like it when they get like 90 percent there and then there's like one unchamfered thing that's like driving you crazy not the case here they did a good job on that the next thing i like is the flipper. So you'll notice this is not like a traditional back flipper. It doesn't have a pocket pecker at all. Instead, it's kind of up and at an angle. Some people would call this a front flipper, like my busker. It's not. I I think the best way to describe this is just a top flipper. 
It's to the right of the pivot. It's definitely not on the left-hand side at all. But it's definitely nowhere to be seen on this side, really, in terms of getting in the way in your pocket or anything like that. So I'll call this a top flipper, and I'm, I'm pretty pleased with it. I think they did a good job with it. Next is the lanyard hole. This I didn't even notice was here until like halfway through the first day of having the knife, which I think is a good mark of a, a lanyard hole. If you're going to have one, I don't want it to be so prominent that it like bothers me that it's there. I feel like this is just a part of the knife and it, you know, that probably maybe could have been cut off, but I don't think it would have made much difference in the use of this knife. So just where you want it to be, it's there if you want it, not in the way if you don't, which I'm, I'm happy about. So now we're diving into the excellent. First thing on excellent is the deployment option. So you can do a traditional like back flipper, finger flip, works fine. I, you don't, you can't really tell until you get your hands on it. it it's actually harder to flip than you would imagine. The reason is the detent on this is really unique. It's just a different mechanism that's giving the knife a detent at all. You, you can't see the detent. Uh, it's invisible uh, to a knife user. You'd have to open it up to kind of see the me mechanism. But it's given the angle that the flipper is at and just the nature of how the detent works, you're not building up pressure with this so that it rockets out. It's more you're just quickly moving your finger so that the blade can get all the way out. In that process, it's breaking the detent. It's a good feeling, but it can misfire. So if you go more of a this motion than a this motion with your finger. Like if I go like this, it, it, it's a wet noodle. It, it won't open, it won't fire. From this place, I can quickly still open it, almost like there's no detent, which is kind of weird, but you can do it. You just have to be very intentional about the direction that your finger is going with the light switch and that you have enough speed going behind it the detent alone isn't enough to give you the tension to rock it out. Overall, I like it because I can do that just as well as doing the thumb deployment. So it's kind of hard to catch this on camera, but I'm just holding it upside down. Boom, I can open up with my thumb, no problem. In fact, I actually prefer, I'll just hit the table. I actually prefer this method of opening the knife for one very important reason, which I will mention in a little bit. Next thing about the excellent part of this knife that I want to mention is just the drop shut action and the smoothness. Now, I haven't talked about the hawk lock yet, which is next on my list, but when you drop the, the blade, it is drop shut. So I like it. It's been tuned such that, pull that into focus, if you're vertical and you drop the blade, it perfectly breaks the detent and closes. Uh, it's like a little miniature guillotine. It doesn't bounce out. If you get enough to break this detent, it's not bouncing back out. I haven't seen that happen once. The You can, if you're at a lower angle, it will bounce on the detent and now it's like stuck here. So, which is fine because you can both pull, pull the knife in this way or you can push up on the flipper tab. Both are equally comfortable to do. I like doing this because I'm like my fingers are already there ready to deploy it again action is very very nice on that very smooth kind of like an access lock on like a 940 only you don't have to pinch which is nice next is the hawk lock itself so I'll speak of the 940 I'll just pull it out so on this side at first I thought this was an access lock but you flip it around nothing's there it's only on one side which is really interesting. This has that bar, and if I try to do it on one side, the bar wants to like get caught up in that um, orientation to where it, it do doesn't want to go down. It can, but you're kind of working against leverage in that regard. This is designed to work on one side, and so when you pop it, it's free falling. I would say the amount of pressure that you have to pull back on the screen is about half that of the one that I have on my 940 with those Omega Springs. It's actually kind of stiff to pull that back. It's about half as much effort on this one, just to give you an idea of what it feels like. I like it. This is innovation that I've been looking for in knives. I think this is really, really awesome. If it can make its way onto more knives, I would definitely be a proponent of that. And I 
I praise them for the Hawk, Hawks trying to make new locks. I think these are the guys that did the tie lock for the Chris Reaver knife. Um, really innovative. I like that. I that you know you think you think the knife game is figured out, and these guys are proving that maybe it's not. Maybe we can still do better. The last thing that I want to talk about is not a particular thing. It's just kind of adding all these things up. This knife in general is just very unique. You've got a top flipper. You can finger light switch it. You can thumb front flip it. You've got a hawk lock that lets your finger stay out of the cutting path to close the knife, which is awesome. Part of why we like the 940 and the PM2 so much. It's got a lot going for it. Even the blade shape is unique and different. I I feel like this just kind of stands out. It's it's not a part of the of the crowd, you might say. It's like the anti Sabenda is is kind of how I think of it. I'm gonna jump into the nitpicks now. I don't, I don't particularly have a lot of nitpicks, but there, there's a few. So one thing, these two little stop pins. These are not thumb, you know, studs to open the knife. They're stop pins so that it locks the blade blade in place. It's pushing up against that. Same with when you put, close the knife, it's keeping it from you know hitting the backspace or anything like that. They work fine. They work great. The only thing I've noticed is that this side is kind of pushed out a little bit. I don't know if it's supposed to be like that. That side is also larger than this side, not just pushed out that side. So it might just be the nature of how they had to put those stop pins in. I have no idea. It hasn't moved out since I've gotten the knife. I've used this quite a lot in the last like three or, three or four days. Um, haven't noticed it move out any. So I, I think it's just how it is. But in which case, my complaint is just, can you figure out how to do this where they're even? It just looks weird. Not something you immediately notice, only if you're nitpicking, which we're in that section. Next thing is the finger on the flipper can be painful. Now, this was with me opening the knife over and over and over to practice and make sure I could get that down. And given the angle that that flipper is on, I have to put it basically right in the middle of my pad and push down pretty hard to give me the like tension and pressure to make the movement I need to make to launch it out. If I try to put my finger up and around, it is your finger runs into these two little pokies up here and you can't actually deploy the knife. And so I can't, you know, get this part in there, I, so it just means I have to put it, boom, right in the middle. So if you do that over and over and over and over, your finger hurts. It got to the point to where the second day, I was only opening the knife with the thumb deployment because I did not want to mess with the finger. My, I just wanted my finger to heal. It was really annoying. Not, I mean, that's not your normal use to flip it like 50 times in a day, so a nitpick still. Next is no jimping. I think this goes along with that issue is if there was some stinking jimping right here, I think I could get more purchase where either I could put my finger over here and still get some traction on that top without having to like just jam my finger in to get the purchase I need. The other thing is that part of the flipper tab would end up right here and that would be a perfect place to have jimping so I can lock into the knife. So that makes perfect sense. I don't know why that wasn't done. So yeah. Next thing is this sharpening choil. So as a sharpening choil, it's fine. It's huge. It's giant. You can sharpen this thing over and over and over. The downside is it taunts me. It wants me to put like my finger into finger choil, but that's not a finger choil. It's going to cut up my finger if I put it in there. So if I was like a baby, this would be like a perfect knife. I could choke up just like I want to. And you really want to choke up because you don't have the jimping and you want a way to like lock into the knife. Uh, so I don't know what the answer is. I don't know if you just open this up to make it a full finger choil or you bring this back a little bit, you maybe halfway into that divot, but then you have blade right below your stop pins and that's in the cutting path. So I get why they did it this way. It's just like teasing me a little bit because I, I like finger choil so much. Next thing I want to talk about is the Hawk logo. This thing is giant. So if you buy if you buy an Orbit from Serge Penchenko, he puts his logo on the presentation side. It's smaller. And then the Hawk logo goes on the back side. 
I like that. I prefer that. Uh, if you like the hot clock and you like a giant in your face, go ahead and get the version that's like this. But I'm glad that Surge kind of recognized that and flipped it around. I think that's a better way to go. The other thing I want to talk about is the clip. Now, I, I do like the clip being flat here is good. That's the one issue I had on my A2A4 knife, which is getting fixed. But, but it it's not a deep carry clip. It's very shallow. And then it's been placed way down the knife. So you've got this giant chunk sticking out of your pocket. I'm not super happy about this. This is actually pretty annoying. So if you're trying to go like stealth mode with your knife, I think the both this sticking out of your pocket and then when you do use it you're like what is this it looks like a, a shaver had a some lovely interactions with a cleaver i i'm not a big fan of it i yeah i'm really disappointed about that but it works it's okay in the hand next thing the and this is really the terrible i guess and it's hard for me to even like put my finger on it but I haven't talked about ergos and really when it comes down to it my brain is telling me this should be fine it it I put it in my hand and it's not like hot spotty but I just feel awkward it's, it's the same feeling I had when I was holding the Sabenza where my thumb wants to come down here but I can't put my finger here that's annoying next is this sucker is slippery as all get out. This is definitely the most slippery knife I've had. I mean, you don't have chamfering, or uh, you don't have jimping anywhere on this knife. Like, if there's some on the thumb, and if there's some on the finger here, boom, I think that would do it for me. Like, it's a blocking knife, and it definitely does not conform to your hand as well as, like, something that is designed for that, like the A2. It's just, it's bizarre. I thought this is the knife that I was going to like do a review and appreciate from afar and then send it along. And this was the knife that I was going to keep as a part of my permanent collection because of all the cool innovation it's doing. But when it really comes down to it, this knife is just made for the hand with an awesome blade that's just more practical when it comes down to it. And so this is the knife that I want to keep. This is going to be a part of my permanent collection because I only have the one gripe and that's getting taken care of with that giant pokey right there. So that's it. I, I have, you know, SF on here. It's lighter. It's only three pounds. This knife ended up surprising me quite a lot. And this kind of disappointed me a little bit. Now, as we move into the full conclusions, I just want to make it clear. I recommend this knife. This knife is an excellent knife, and because of those innovations, because of the, the top flipper, because of the hot lock, because of the unique blade, I think this is doing something new, and I want knife makers to take risks and do new things. In some cases, like the hot lock and the top flipper, I think they have a winner here, and it's just a few changes. You know, put a few chamfering things on here, maybe a different blade shape in addition to this one. And you could have yourself a home run, move this clip up, make it a little bit more deep carry, maybe conform the body a little bit so I have my fingers kind of lock in a little bit more. This is like, you know, Gen 1, and I'm going to be super jazzed for Gen 2 if they can answer some of these, like, small nitpicks. Nothing critical. It's basically the terrible part about this knife is just the sheer number of tiny little nitpicks that just kind of death from a thousand pricks to where I can't justify the stain in my permanent collection. So I definitely want to find it at home. Maybe maybe the ergos for somebody else will just be better than it is for me, and then everybody will be happy. So that's my review of the Serge Panchenko g and Hawk Orbit. I hope this video is helpful to you, and I will check you guys out next time. Bye.